let's get started. Sure to pull the flesh away from the sit bones so that you're starting with a stable foundation. Draw the navel in towards the spine and allow the crown of the head to grow tall towards the sky. Bring the shoulder blades together and down the back and place the hands on the thighs, palms up and close your eyes. Start to become aware of your breath and allow that breath, if it's possible, to flow in through the nose and out through the nose. We'll start to bring the breath into balance by making the inhale the same length as the exhale. So if your inhale is for a count of four, your exhale would be for a count of four. If your inhale was for another number, the exhale would be for that same amount. Your rate of breathing could be completely different than mine and that's perfectly fine. With each inhale, create length in the spine. And as you exhale, you'll keep the length, but just begin to release tension. Relax the jaw, let the shoulders relax away from the ears. Let those knees gravitate towards the mat. Before we begin today, I'd like you to set an intention for your practice. It can be anything you want it to be. Let's bring our hands together at the heart in Anjali Mudra prayer position. We'll breathe together three times and on the third exhale, share the sound of Om. Take a nice deep breath in through the nose. Exhale through the nose. Inhale. And exhale. And for the third time together, inhale. Oh. Bow your head. Place the hands on the thighs. Softly open your eyes looking forward. We'll begin today laying on our backs so you can just move anything out of the way that you have and lay down comfortably on your back. Your legs will be extended out nice and long and your arms resting by your sides. As you inhale, the arms come up overhead until the thumbs touch the space behind you. And as you exhale, the arms will come back by your sides. So you're just lifting and lowering the arms, moving with your breath. The next time the arms are by your sides, pause there. Draw the knees into the chest, coming to Apanasana. And we're going to start to make some nice big circles. So the hands stay on the knees and you're just taking the knees into a big circle. As you do this, you'll feel the back press against the mat.
begin to make your circles going the other way. Become still, hugging the knees into the chest. So you'll keep those knees hugged in, bring them out like a V. Take the arms between the legs and see if you can grasp the pinky toe sides of the feet. If not, you can hold on to the ankles. Guide the soles of the feet to look up towards the sky. So it almost looks like you're doing a squat on the ceiling. And then you'll rock gently from side to side for Ananda Balasana, happy baby. Become still, lower the soles of the feet to the mat. Extend the legs out nice and long. Scoot over just a little bit, Pop. Thanks. And bring the arms out like a T, palm face the sky. Bend your right knee, placing the sole of the foot on the mat. And then you're going to let that right knee open up out to the right as the foot presses against the upper inner thigh of the left leg. So we're in a supine tree pose. Take a breath in and as you exhale, the right knee will start to look up towards the sky. Let the right knee cross over the body as you roll onto that left hip. So the right knee comes down to the ground. For many of us, this will cause that right shoulder to pop up off of the mat. If that's you, just bend your elbow and place the hand on the rib cage. And then you can see if you can bring the shoulders closer to the ground. Slowly draw that right knee back up towards the sky. Coming back to your supine tree pose, arms extended out like a T. Place the sole of the right foot on the mat. Knee looks up towards the sky. Extend that right leg nice and long. Next, bend the left knee. Sole of the foot comes to the mat. Let that left knee open up out to the left as you press the left foot into the inner thigh of that right leg. Breathe here. On an exhale, that left knee starts to raise as it crosses over the body. So you're placing that left knee on the ground, even if the left shoulder pops up. Remember, we can place the hand on the rib cage to protect it and then begin to bring the shoulders back towards the mat if possible. Slowly draw that left knee back up. Come back to your supine tree pose, arms out like a T. Let the left knee move up towards the sky as you place the left foot on the mat. Bend the right knee to meet the left and bring your arms by your sides, palms face the floor. Press down through the feet. You're going to draw the pelvic floor up towards the navel, navel towards the spine. Engage the glutes, press down through the feet and lift the hips. Watch the breath here. Slowly lower the hips back down to the mat. 
Draw the knees into the chest. Again, we're going to make those big knee circles on our back. And then reverse the direction of those knee circles. become still. We're going to start to rock head to tail. Feel free to take a couple rocks back and forth just to have a little fun. Bring yourself up to seated and we'll come right over the knees to all fours, hands and knees. The knees are just hip width apart. The knees are slightly behind the hips. Tops of the feet are flat on the mat. Hands are shoulder width apart. They are slightly forward of the shoulders. Fingers spread nice and wide, and we're pressing down through the palm, I'm sorry, the fingers and the perimeter of the palm. Draw the navel towards the spine and relax the point between your shoulder blades. Take a breath in. As you exhale, shift the hips to the heels, the chest to the thighs, coming to extended child's pose. So those elbows are up off of the mat. On the inhale, bring yourself back up all fours. Exhale, back to child's pose. Inhale, up all fours. Continue moving with your breath here. The next time you come to all fours, you can pause there. Take a breath in. As you exhale, begin to round the spine towards the sky. And then as you inhale, the belly draws down towards the mat as the bottom and the head reach towards the sky. Exhale, round the spine. Inhale, belly draws down. Bring yourself back to a neutral neck, neutral spine. Next. Take a breath in. As you exhale, you're going to wag your tail to the left as you turn to look over the left shoulder. Inhale, everything comes back to center. Exhale, wag the tail to the right as you turn to look over the right shoulder. Inhale, back to center. Three more on each side, using your breath to guide you. When you finish, you can shift back to child's pose and rest. time if you're not there already. But once you come to rest in child's pose, come back to the balanced breath and revisit the intention you set at the beginning of class. Slowly bring yourself back up to all fours hands and knees. So what we're going to do now is take our left 
hand and place it on the sacrum. Take a breath in and as you exhale, you'll begin to twist to the left. Breathing here. Slowly come back to center, place that left hand on the ground. Bring the right hand to the sacrum, low back. Begin to twist to the right. Make sure you're breathing here. And come back to center. Take a moment to shift back to child's pose. And then as you inhale, bring yourself back up to all fours. So we're going to start to make some nice hip circles with the left leg. So bring that left leg up until the thigh is parallel to the mat and begin to make some nice big circles. Sorry, Francis. Go ahead and lower the left knee. Next, we'll lift that right leg. Start to make some nice big circles at the hip. Lower the right knee. Next, you'll bring your forearms to the mat and then clasp your hands together. Take a breath in and as you exhale, you're going to glide forward so that your chin just passes the fingertips and then bring yourself back. We'll do that two more times. Keep the navel drawn in shift forward and shift back. One more. Good job. So we'll come up onto the hands and shift those hips back and up. So we create length in the spine. This is a great modification for downward facing dog if downward facing dog is ever a little much for you. It's a knee down, down dog. And the most important thing is that length in the spine. So the hips shift back and up. Lower the forearms to the mat, clasp the hands together. Begin to shift the weight forward as the chin comes right past the fingertips. Shift back. Two more. When you finish, you can come to all fours, hands and knees, and just walk the hands towards the knees. Take a moment just to sit on the heels if that's comfortable for you. And then we'll come to sit in Sukhasana, easy pose. So I've been using notes to teach my classes for 10 years. And even in my teacher training, my teacher said, you don't need your notes anymore. You don't need your notes. But I just find that I really stay on track with my notes. And I feel like we just have better classes when I have them. So we are going to sit in Baddha Konasana. Bend the knees, placing the soles of the feet on the mat. And then let the soles of the feet come together as the knees open up out to the sides. So you're drawing the heels in close to the body. You can hold on to the feet or the heel, I'm sorry, the ankles. Shoulder blades are together and down the back, chest open, crown of the head reaching towards the sky. Two 
take a breath in and as you exhale, begin to hinge forward at the hips. So you may go just an inch, you may go farther. How far you go isn't important. Inhale, create length, exhale, hinge. Slowly bring yourself back up. Press down through the sit bones. Inhale, grow tall. Exhale, hinge forward. Slowly bring yourself back up. One more time. Press down through the sit bones. Inhale, grow tall. As you exhale, hinge forward at the hips. Slowly bring yourself back up. Let's come back to all fours, hands and knees. From all fours, shift back to child's pose. Bring yourself back up. Exhale back. Inhale up. One more time. Let's come to lay down on our bellies. We're going to practice Cobra pose. So I want you to bring your hands right next to your chest. Hug the elbows in. You're going to press the hands into the mat and then press the hands towards the feet, which will cause the body to shift forward and then you rise. You can have bent elbows or straight arms. On the exhale, lower down. Press the hands into the mat. Press the hands towards your feet. The body shifts forward as you rise. Exhale, lower. One more time. Press the hands into the mat. Press those hands towards the feet. The chest sweeps through the arms as you rise. Relax the shoulders away from the ears. Press down through those hands and shift back to child's pose. Rest here. Come back to the breath. Revisit the intention you set at the beginning of class. And bring yourself up to all fours. We're going to begin to move into downward facing dog. So from all fours, curl your toes under. Start to shift the hips towards your heels. The knees lift just a bit as you press back through those heels, coming to downward facing dog, Adho Mukha Svanasana. So remember when we did the version on the knees, we want to create length in the spine. So bend both of your knees and keep them bent. Shift the hips to the back of the room where the wall meets the ceiling, creating that length in the spine. And then without shifting the body forward, you'll just relax the heels towards the mat. Start to walk the feet forward, coming to Uttanasana, forward fold. Relax the head and neck here. You can gently just turn the head from side to side. Place the hands on the hips, press down through the feet to bring yourself up. We'll move into Utkatasana chair pose. So starting from Tadasana, as you inhale, those arms sweep up. On the exhale, begin to bend the knees as if you're just sitting on the edge of a chair. Take a breath in, 
as you exhale, slide those hips back. So I'm being gentle on my knees. So maybe I'm sitting on a counter height chair. You can decide how low to go here. If you have an arch in the back, gently tuck that tailbone to lengthen the low back. Arms can be reaching towards the sky or hands can come to the hips. Press down through the feet, bring yourself up. Palms come together up overhead. And as you exhale, Bring your hands to your heart. So we're going to do a variation of chair pose now, keeping the hands at the heart. So take a breath in, exhale, sit on the edge of the chair as you slide those hips back. Press down through the feet to bring yourself up. We're going to do that three more times. Take a breath in as you exhale, Slide those hips back into your chair. Tuck the tailbone slightly. Press down through the feet. Bring yourself up one more time. Take a breath in as you exhale. Bend those knees. Slide those hips back. Watch the breath. Press down through the feet to bring yourself up. Bring your arms by your sides. Inhale, arms sweep up. Exhale, fold forward, hinging from those hips. Relax the head and neck here. You can gently turn that head from side to side. Place the hands on the hips, press down through the feet to bring yourself up. We're going to go back to those hip rotations, but this time we'll do it standing. So start by standing in Tadasana Mountain Pose. Feet are parallel, crown of the head reaches towards the sky, pelvis in neutral, shoulder blades together and down the back. Bring the hands together at the heart. And you're going to begin to lift that right leg with the knee bent and then begin to make some circles with that hip. Nice, big circles. This will also take balance into play. If you're near a wall, by all means, you can hold on to that wall or a chair near you. Keep the navel drawn in. Pelvic floor draws up. So this next time, once your uh, right knee is pointing out to the right, I want you to pause there. Extend through the heel for a one-legged goddess pose. Watch your breath. Turn the toes to face the front of the room. Lower that foot to the mat. Now we'll do the other side. So you'll lift the other leg, which for me is my left. I can't remember what I said before. Sometimes I mirror and sometimes I don't. So I get a little confused. Start to make some nice big circles. Moving that femur in the hip socket. The next time that left knee is pointing out to the left, you'll pause there, flex the foot, keep the navel drawn in, watch your breath. Turn those left toes to face the front of the room, lower the left foot next to the right. As you inhale, arms sweep up, and as you exhale, hinge forward.
place your hands on your hips, press down through the feet to bring yourself up. So we're going to take a nice wide stance on the mat. The outer edges of the feet are parallel to the outer edges of your mat. Navel draws in, crown of the head reaches tall, shoulder blades together and down the back. As you inhale, the arms sweep up. Exhale, hinge forward. Relax the head and neck here. Place the hands on the hips. Press down through the feet to come up. So we'll move into goddess pose with both legs. So we're going to turn both feet so that the toes point to the um, top corners of our mat. Place the hands on the hips. Take a breath in. As you exhale, you're going to begin to bend the knees. The knees should be tracking over the second and third toes. You can go as low as you would like. And imagine the back is just sliding down a wall. Hands can stay on the hips or you can extend those arms up and then bend at the wrist as if you're holding trays and then bring those shoulder blades together and down the back. Watch your breath here. Press down through the feet, bring yourself up. Lower your arms, bring those feet back to parallel. As you inhale, arms sweep up. Exhale, fold forward. Relax the head and neck. From here, we're going to twist. So hold on to those ankles. Make the spine nice and long. Oh my goodness, a praying mantis. Isaac, I have a buddy. Take a breath in and as you exhale at that belly, you're just going to begin to twist to the left. Bring yourself back to center. And on the next exhale, you're going to twist to the right. Come back to center, place the hands on the hips, press down through the feet to bring yourself up. So once again, we're going to turn our toes towards those top corners of the mat. Hands are on the hips. Take a breath in and as you exhale, begin to bend those knees. They track over the second and third toes. Remember, you do not have to go this far. You can go further. This is your practice. Hands can stay on the hips or extend those arms up and then bend those wrists like you're carrying two trays. Bring those shoulder blades together and down the back. Press down through the feet, bring yourself up, lower the arms, feet come back to parallel. Inhale, arms sweep up. Exhale, hinge from the hips, folding forward. Relax the head and neck. Place the hands on the hips. Press down through the feet to bring yourself up. You can step those feet back to just femur width apart. Coming to Tadasana Mountain Pose. Standing at the top of the mat. As you inhale, arms sweep up. And then as you exhale, hinge from those hips folding forward. Relax the head and neck here. As you inhale, bring yourself up halfway. And as you exhale, fold forward. You're going to step the right foot back and just lower the knee to the mat. Step that left foot back, lowering the knee, coming to your tabletop. 
we're going to shift back to child's pose, but then begin to shift to the left, bringing ourselves up, shifting over to the right as we move back through child's pose. So we're making some of those big hip circles, moving through child's pose and tabletop. The next time you come to all fours, just pause for a moment and then we'll go the other way. Going through child's pose, bringing ourselves back up to move through tabletop. And slowly bring yourself back up to all fours, hands and knees. Take a breath in as you exhale, shift back to child's pose. Inhale, back up, all fours, hands and knees. Exhale back. Inhale up. The next time you shift back to child's pose, pause there, keeping those elbows up off of your mat. Take a breath in and as you exhale, begin to walk the hands out to the left. As you bow out the right ribs, feel the stretch on that right side of the body. Start to walk your hands back to center. And then you'll walk those hands out to the right as you bow out those left ribs. Walk the hands back to center. And now we are going to come to lay on our backs. You can lay on your back and hug the knees into the chest. Bring the arms out like a T, palms face the sky. Press the soles of the feet up towards the sky. It's perfectly fine to have a bend in the knee here. So I want you to cross your left leg over the right or around the um, knee or higher area then bend both knees you're going to hold on to your left ankle with the right hand your right ankle with the left hand and just draw those legs in towards the chest release the legs extend them up towards the sky now we'll cross the right leg over the left, higher than the knee, bend the knees, grasp your right ankle with the left hand, left ankle with the right hand, and bring those knees in towards the chest. Release the legs or the ankles. Bring the arms out like a T, Press the soles of the feet up towards the sky. Rotate those ankles. Reverse the direction of your ankle rotation.
let the ankles become still. Bend the knees, placing the soles of the feet on the mat. Bring your arms by your sides, palms face the floor. Draw the pelvic floor up towards the navel, navel towards the spine. Engage the glutes, press down through those feet and lift the hips. Breathe here. Slowly lower the hips down to the mat. Draw the knees into the chest once more. Place the soles of the feet on the mat and let the soles of the feet come together as the knees open up out to the sides. You can rest your arms wherever they're comfortable. Revisit the intention you set one more time. We'll begin to move into Shavasana, the last pose of our class. Traditionally, Shavasana is done laying on your back, but it is a yoga pose. So if you'd like to modify it, you can do that. For the traditional version, you'll just lay on your back with your legs extended out nice and long. Arms are by your sides, palms face the sky. And if anybody wonders what I'm always getting, this is just a um, really cold washcloth because it's hot out here. So remember, you can set yourself up for special things in Shavasana too, like a cold washcloth or even sometimes I'll spray like a lavender oil on one. Legs extended out nice and long. Just let the feet flop open. Relax the jaw by creating a space between the top and bottom rows of teeth. And let the tongue fall away from the roof of the mouth. The arms are by your sides, just a few inches away from the body. Resist the urge to make subtle movements. Let your natural breath take over. Rest in Shavasana.
slowly start to deepen your breath. Becoming aware of the space around you and becoming aware of your body. Start to make subtle movements that might feel good, like wiggling the fingers and toes. You can rotate through the wrists and the ankles. Turn the head gently from side to side. And stretch through the arms and the legs like you're just waking up. And then bend the knees, bringing the feet as wide as your mat. And just let those knees sway from side to side. And then we'll roll to the right side in the fetal position and stay there for a few breaths. Keeping your eyes closed, if you'd like, you can use those arms to bring yourself back up to a comfortable seated position. Once you get there, you can bring the hands to the heart in Anjali Mudra. Thank you so much for sharing your practice with me today. Thank you for setting your intention and revisiting that. May you be happy. May you be peaceful. May you be free from suffering. May you have ease and well being. Namaste. Thank you.